in this exercise we'll be removing the GPU chip from a Xbox 360 motherboard. This motherboard has the uh, three red ring of death problem and that problem is almost always associated with the GPU chip. We'll be removing the chip on the uh, Bird 3000 and next I will prepare the board for chip removal. Now the board's been prepared for the chip removal. Um, what I've done is add some foil tape around components surrounding the chip. One thing that we want to avoid is applying any excess heat to the RAM modules. Uh, they're much less dense than the GPU chip and the solder melts a lot easier. So best practice is to shield them from the heat of the uh, infrared lamp. Also, you want to protect the chip itself with foil tape because these components on top of the chip are prone to become loose and if you accidentally touch one during the operation you'll ruin the chip. And on top of the foil is a thin layer of flux because flux gel actually. Uh, the reason we do that is we do not want to cause any discoloration of the chip because that will basically ruin it. Reboiling a Xbox 360 GPU chip is a very difficult tedious procedure. You basically have zero margin for error. Um, the Bird 3000 is the machine to do it with. It absolutely can handle the job without a problem. Uh, however, what I recommend is to replace the chip as opposed to attempt to reball it. You can buy them from the Chinese web stores online. Uh, they're readily available for about $20 and it's much easier just to replace the chip than reball the chip. But this exercise we will do the reball as well. Now in this step I'm going to program the machine temperatures to what I need to use to get the chip off the Xbox 360 board. So first I'll start the machine up. First step is I want to program the temperature for the bottom heating plate. And I'll do that by holding in the set button for five seconds and now I can enter the maximum temperature I want the heating plate to go up to which in this case with the Xbox 360 you need a lot of heat because they use lead free solder and it's very difficult to melt and get off so I'm going to go higher than normal I'm going to go 250 for heat on the bottom and I will just adjust uh, that here it's 250 that's set. It's set again. Now if I want to program the alarm, which isn't really necessary in this case, uh, I would do the same procedure, but no need to. So Hold the button in. Now it's back to normal. Same exact setup for the infrared beam, the black infrared light. So I want to set that to probably 270 degrees maximum. actually above so I'll go down to even 270 okay that's set next I'll program the alarm I want that to go up to about say 250 Celsius it'll make a high-pitched sound which basically warns you that you're in the area you need to be to complete the reflow. Hold the button in. Back to normal. Okay, first step is to well place the board on the machine. Very helpful. Let's see what you're doing. Um, we want to line the red arrows up at the center of the chip. There's one on the side and one on the front. Line that in the back. We have to go. It's aligned in the front. Good to go again. Tighten the work area down. 
Now we want to attach the temperature sensor, which is going to give us the exact temperature of the chip during the process. It's taking place here, right on top of the chip. We're ready to go. Last thing is just want to check the distance from the top of the board to the lamp. Lower it down to three centimeters. We're ready to go. So we want to start up the fans. Bottom fan. Top fan. I'm going to use the alarm on the uh, infrared lamp. Turn the alarm on. Uh, first step is to uh, start the bottom heating plate. We're going to let this warm up until it reaches the temperature about 250 Celsius, and we're going to let it sit at 250 Celsius for about five minutes to get a good even heating on the board. Here we can see the chip is centered perfectly under the red arrow and the uh, temperature sensor is in place. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, the reason that we're using higher temperatures than normal is because the uh, we're using foil on the chip because we don't want to damage the chip. Uh, very, very sensitive to heat, the Xbox chip, and if it discolors slightly, it'll be ruined and there's no point in trying to reball it. So we protect the top with foil. Okay, now we've reached the... Uh, Proper uh, temperature for the bottom heater will be there, fluctuates a little. We start the infrared lamp. And now it's just a matter of waiting for it to heat up until we hear the alert, which will let me know that we're approaching the temperature necessary to lift the chip. I also have my chip lifting tools handy. I want to have these ready before you start because you don't want to be in the middle of it. And notice you don't have uh, the chip lifter in your hand around. Um, so what I use is you know, plunger based chip lifter and I just nudge it with a exacto knife just to see if it's loose. Right now we're in the general neighborhood of where you'd be able to lift a normal chip. But as I said, the, uh, the Xbox 360 GPU is definitely not a normal chip. Very difficult to remove. But not a problem for the Bird 3000. There's the alarm right on cue. I'm going to start probing the chip to see if it's loose. And it is loose already. Good sign. I'm ready to lift it. I'm just going to raise the lamp. Set it to the side. Perfect lift. Lower the temperatures. Actually turn the heat off. Allow the board to cool as is. Don't disturb it. It'll cool on its own. Take about 20 minutes to a half hour. Should also mention don't power the machine off till it's completely cooled down. You want the fans to do the work and take the heat out of the system.